A warm welcome to Thursday's edition of Primetime News. I'm Michael Madimba. Leading tonight's bulletin. The newly appointed Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Dr. Frederick Shava, paid a courtesy visit to President Dr. Hage Gengob today to discuss matters on how to improve bilateral relations between Namibia and Zimbabwe. Well, believing that uh, this is a critical score also uh, on the President, uh, just to tell the President that we are here for the purpose that I have mentioned just now, and uh, to listen to the President's uh, wise counsel on uh, what uh, uh, we are here for, and is very supportive of uh, the intentions that we are here for, and looking forward to uh, the Namibia hosting the first uh, binational council, uh, binational commission uh, in due course, COVID permitting. And um, uh, I, I think. Uh, that's uh, what we talked about, but also just very uh, uh, generally about the situation of improving uh, the uh, international relations, uh, bilateral relations between uh, our two countries. Minister of Urban and Rural Development Erastus Utoni said the outcry of many Namibians to own a house has reached government and stakeholders. Thus, the delivery of affordable houses and service land cannot further be delayed. More on the story by our journalist Erasmus Shalihakwe and camera operator Josephine Simeon. Speaking during a stakeholder consultative meeting in the capital on Wednesday, Minister of Urban and Rural Development Erastes Utoni said some communities have taken matters into their own hands and initiated their own projects because they are tired of waiting and are now ready to contribute the little they can to help their communities get access to affordable housing, especially to low-income groups. Therefore, it will be easier if all stakeholders in the construction sector give them a helping hand. We have many of our people under well-intended schemes such as Build Together, Shape Dwellers and many other stakeholders, but a dire need for the intervention of our financial sector is needed in order to expedite the servicing and the land delivery process. As we have demonstrated through our informal settlement upgrade pilot project in the city of Windu, with the reduced interest rates by financiers, provided that we can build more credit link houses that are below 200,000 Namibian dollars. He added that many people in society earn between 2,000 Namibia dollars and 3,000 Namibia dollars per month, and they include petrol attendants, cleaners in public and private sectors, street vendors, as well as those in entry positions in various establishments. Commerce Region Governor Laura McLeod Kachira, who spoke at the same occasion, cautioned that the rapid and uncontrolled urbanization trend will continue to make the situation more complicated if leaders continue delaying and postponing affordable housing and land delivery projects. We need to combine the current legal resources at our disposal and jointly mobilize for more resources to face this obligation with confidence and determination. She highlighted that the informal settlements are growing day by day and the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic should have taught leaders that this is the right time to change the face of the informal settlement as a matter of urgency. Josephine Simeon, Nampe News. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relations and Cooperation Netumbo Nandindaitwa has provided clarity on the decision taken by the Namibian delegation to abstain from the vote on the United Nations General Assembly draft resolution adopted on 17 May 2021. The draft resolution titled the responsibility to protect and the prevention of genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing and crimes against humanity seeks for the inclusion of an item of the same title on the annual agenda of the General Assembly as well as to request the UN Secretary General to report annually to the General Assembly on the subject. Nandine Daitwa in a media statement on Wednesday said Namibia abstaining from the vote was not because it is indifferent to crimes against humanity, including genocide, but due to its concerns with application of the concept on the responsibility to protect, which has been used to selectively target certain countries in pursuit of narrow interests of the few. The News Roundup is up next.
in tonight's business and economics news. The Ondangwa Town Council and Joto Investment CC on Wednesday signed a memorandum of understanding for the upgrade of the Sam Yoma Gravel Road to b 2 men standard. The 2.2-kilometer road will cost the council 16.7 million Namibian dollars. The construction of tiring the Sam Yoma Road starts from the extension 16 four-way stop near the Ondangwa Fire Station and cuts through the inner town of Ondangwa to the eastern direction to join the B1 main road from Omothia, Onipa, via Oshikati at Onambango Open Market Intersection. Joto Investment in conjunction with Knight PSO Consulting are the two local contractors responsible for upgrading the road. Meanwhile, Ministry of Land Reform and Agriculture Executive Director Percy Misika said government's resettlement formula is not financially sustainable, nor does it meet the desired objectives. Misika made the remarks in a recent interview with NAMPA that covered an array of issues around the government's resettlement program in the context of food security and commercial viability. Official records show that the government spent 88 million Namibian dollars to buy 10 farms on which only 20 people were resettled in the just ended 2020-2021 financial year. Ms. Sika said the current resettlement plan does not take into account or differentiate between Namibians in need of smaller urban of land to call home, those who require medium land for crop or subsistence farming, and those who need to farm commercially. Fast Rent Namibia Foundation has pumped in a total amount of 150,000 Namibian dollars to the Edulution program for the 2020-2021 financial year. Fast Rent Corporate Social Investment Manager Rivonia Kahivere in a media statement Wednesday said, since the beginning of the program in March 2019, the number of pupils to the program increased from 665 to 3,360, with three centers opened in Rehoboth and one in Hort Op. It's time for the Business and Economics Roundup. And now, a look into the world of sports. The village of Arab will this weekend host the first edition of the annual Kitman Soup Rural Constituency Charity Tournament. The tournament will take place at the Arab Sports Stadium from Saturday to Tuesday and will see teams from the Namibia Football Association's first and second division and non-league teams participate. Kitman Soup Rural Constituency Councillor Herchi Vetboi, who is one of the organizers of the tournament, told NAMPA on Wednesday that the tournament serves as a fundraising activity and the money raised will procure mattresses and blankets for the vulnerable and pensioners in the constituency. On to international football. Kylian Mbappe is delighted to get the chance to play alongside Karim Benzema at Euro 2020, declaring there are not many better players than the Real Madrid forward. The 33-year-old Benzema earned his first France call-up in over five years on Tuesday when he was included in Didier Deschamps' squad for the delayed Euro 2020 tournament. Mbappe, meanwhile, continues his excellent season with a brilliant display in Paris Saint-Germain's 2-0 win over Monaco and the Coupe de France final on Wednesday, assisting Mario Icardi's opener and scoring himself late on. In Formula One news, McLaren have called on Formula One's governing body to speed up a clampdown on flexible rear wings because they say some rival teams are gaining an unfair advantage by bending the rules. The International Automobile Federation sent a technical directive to all 10 teams last week notifying them of new load deflection tests to be introduced from June 15 this year. 
The delay gives teams time to make changes but means they can carry on as before for this weekend's Monaco Grand Prix and the following race in Azerbaijan. Your sports roundup is up next. That's all the news we had for you this evening. Thanks for tuning in. Give us a like and share with friends and family. If you're new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Also, to stay abreast with the latest happenings locally and globally, do click on the notifications bell. From myself and the entire production team, it's good night. <laughs>